Hey DIYers, I'm George from Alarm Grid. Today we're going to be working with the IQ2 Plus that has a PowerG daughter board card built in. And we're going to be learning in a wireless panic switch. This is a PowerG PG9938. Yes, so this is a one button panic switch. And you can use this switch to either contact the medical department, or I'm sorry, the medical authorities or the police. Yes, um, so you can either program this to do medical or a police panic, an auxiliary or uh, an auxiliary or a silent panic. So you have two different options with this key fob. And let's go ahead and start opening it up. So when you open up the box, you're gonna have a couple of different mounting um, brackets. Uh, you're going to have uh, a lanyard that you can wear it around as a, around the neck. And you also have like a little belt clip. There's also a mounting bracket that you can mount under, for instance, underneath a desk. Um, so this is the mounting bracket here. This is the little lanyard with a little key ring that you can attach it to. And then this looks like the belt clip. So it does come with three adapter pieces that you can use depending on whether it's going to be in a fixed location or if you're going to be carrying it with you whenever you leave the house or, or in such. And again, you can actually program this specifically if it's going to be in a fixed location or if you're going to be leaving the house with it. And I'll show you that once we get into the programming. It comes with a little uh, manual here. And then last but not least, we have the key fob switch. Or I'm sorry, not the key fob, the wireless panic switch. All right. So first thing we want to do is if you are using this power G sensor, you need to make sure that you're using a power G compatible system. This is the IQ2 plus, which means that it comes with the power G daughter board card built in. If you guys do not have the power G daughter board card in your IQ2, then this device will not work. So you need to first of all, make sure you have the power G daughter board card in your system. All IQ2 pluses do come with a power G daughter board card. So just something to keep in mind. Now, the difference between PowerG and a lot of other sensors is that PowerG is actually well known for the range that their sensors can communicate as. This is known to be able to communicate at two kilometers open. So that's within line of sight. Obviously, if it has to go through construction, it's going to be decreased a lot. If it's going through cement, if it's going through wood, if it's going through brick, it's going to be decreased depending on what kind of obstacles and and uh, construction it has to go through. Um, it also uses 128-bit AES encryption. So it basically protects you against hacking. You don't ever have to anyone worry about anyone ever spoofing the sensor. So it actually has an LED at the very top, which is going to help us figure out uh, while we're learning it in that it's actually working. So I'm going to show you guys what to do first. So we have to hit on the very top. You can swipe down or just hit the button. And then you can go to settings. You go to advanced settings. Enter user code. I'm going to enter in my dealer code, 1111. You can either enter in your dealer or installer code to program sensors in. Uh, the default ones are 1111 and 2222. So you want to make sure if your company or yourself have changed any of them, you want to make sure you use the correct one. We'll know we use the correct one because we'll have installation in the top left. So we hit installation. We then go to devices, security sensors, and we're going to hit auto learn sensor. This is going to put the system into a learning mode, right? So now it's listening for any devices that are being triggered. What I'm going to do with this little uh, panic switch is I'm going to press and hold. Now, when you press and hold, you're going to see the light blink once, but you have to press and hold again, and you're going to see another steady light come on, and then that's when you release. If you let go after you see the first light come on, then it's not going to learn into the system. And I'm going to show you guys that right now. It blinked once red and I let go immediately. Nothing happened at the panel. You need to make sure you press and hold after that red blink. And then one more blink after that is when you release. It's a steady red light. It starts blinking fast. The panel then recognizes it. It says sensor 3201118 is requesting to be added to the list. Do you want to continue? Just hit OK. So that sensor number that it just gave me can actually be found on the back of the sticker right here. And that's the ID. And you can actually match the ID on the back of the sticker 
with the ID that's on the very first line on the programming screen for that sensor. So just make sure they match up. They should if you're using the AutoLearn sensor, but um, if you're using multiple devices, sometimes one of the and a different one may learn in accidentally. So just make sure that you you match up the correct uh, ID number that's on the sticker on the back of the switch or on on the back of the panic uh, on the back of the panic button, and then uh, it'll match up to the first line there. Now you'll see on their sensor type, it's going to automatically be set to an auxiliary pendant, right? You can't really switch it away from that, so that's what it's going to be set as. The sensor group, this is where you guys can play around with it and decide what you want it to be set as. So mobile auxiliary is if, let's say you're wearing it on your lanyard around that little, um, on your lanyard around the little key ring. Yeah, so the, the mobile auxiliary, that's actually a medical panic. All right, um, the mobile intrusion that again is if you're carrying it with you if you're if it travels with you if you're wearing it on your body and that one actually mobile intrusion sets off a police panic and it's not a silent one it's an audible one so make sure that if you choose mobile intrusion be aware that it's going to be a loud police panic um, same thing for the mobile auxiliary it does it's not a constant beep like the police panic but it does kind of shoot out um, it kind of shoots out a sound for like two seconds and then stops for a couple of seconds and shoots out another sound again. And, and you'll see, I'm going to show you guys in a second here. Um, fixed intrusion is if you have this in a fixed location, for instance, underneath a desk. And the fixed intrusion, that's a police panic. All right. Uh, the fixed silent, again, that's in a fixed location underneath a desk. And it's a silent alarm. So the panel's not going to make any sound, but it will send the police... Uh, the police panic over to the central station. The fixed auxiliary, again, fixed in a fixed location, and that's if you're using it for a medical, for medical reasons. And then the safety auxiliary pendant, that is almost like a call button. So like if you have a nurse at the home, it, what it actually does is it, it makes the panel chime. So if you have the chime type on, the voice prompt is on, it'll actually enunciate on the panel, um, you know, auxiliary pendant and then you know, if the nurse is by the alarm system, she can hear it. Or that's just an example of what it could be used for, right? Um, just to do the, just to sh show you guys an example, I'll show you guys the mobile intrusion first. Um, the sensor name, you can actually play around with that. You can add whatever you want. So if you do set it as a, as a, um, you know, the safety auxiliary pendant, and you know, if you guys do have a nurse at the home, you can just put nurse. All right, but you can play around with the sensor name. The chime type, you can make whatever chime you want. You can make it a doorbell. Sorry, I clicked the wrong one. <laughs> dear, dear, I don't know. <laughs> there you go. They got the voice prompts on and the source, since this is Power G, you wanna make sure it is set to Power G, all right? After you're done, hit Add New. It'll, it'll say Adding Sensor, just please wait a second. Once you're there, just hit the Home button. And uh, the last thing you want to do is just make sure you test it. Now, if you are being monitored by a central station, make sure that you call first and place your account on test because if you set off a medical panic, you're more than likely going to get police showing up to your house. So if you're being monitored by a central station, make sure your account is on test and then you can press and hold. It's going to get loud, so I'm going to disarm it right away. I did do the audible one, right? Let's see, press and hold. There we go. Disarm it. Got that stuff. All right. Um, so as you see, it gets pretty loud. We set off a, a that was a, a, a police panic, which is why it was that constant blaring. I'm going to show you guys now what the metal panic sounds like. Swipe down from the top, settings, advanced. Entering your dealer or installer code. Mine is 11111. Go to installation, devices, security sensors. This time I'm going to do edited sensor because it's already learned in. I'll hit the little pencil icon in the right hand side. And I'll switch this down to, let's say, a mobile auxiliary. So now this is the one that's going to give out small little um, sirens. Yeah, it's going to make the siren sound up just for a couple of seconds, turn off, a couple of seconds and turn off. I'll hit save. I'll hit the home button again. And 
press and hold. It looks like the key fob light. It stops. Sounds again. Stops. Sounds again. That was really tough on your ears. All right. Um, and then the silent police panic. You swipe down from the top again. Settings. Advanced. One, 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 one. Installation. Devices. Security sensors. Edit sensor. Pencil icon. Open up the drop down. And let's do a fixed silent. Now this is not going to say anything at the panel, but it will make that little envelope. It'll show you a notification up there. So right now, I'm just going to acknowledge all of these just so you guys can see, right? Um, just hit OK. That's just clearing out my history right there, basically. So now the little envelope is gone, but the silent panic is not going to make any sound on the panel, but it should bring up the uh, silent panic up in the envelope in the top right. See, it triggered it. The alarm doesn't go off or anything. But if you looked at the top right, that envelope, if we hit it, messages, alerts, alarms, you'll see there was an auxiliary pendant, which was the name of the sensor, and there was a police emergency, but it was a silent one. So let's just go ahead and acknowledge that. Hit OK, and you can go back. So that is just a quick way to program this uh, PowerG uh, <laughs> panic switch make sure that if you guys do have any questions if you guys are failing to learn it in make sure that you're pressing and holding it yeah remember that little testing i did if you press hold and then release after the first light it won't learn in so you have to continue holding it if you guys have any questions at all about how to get this panic switch learned into your iq2 plus system please feel free to go ahead and email us our email is support at alarmgrid.com and uh, if you guys found this video helpful make sure you hit like underneath subscribe to the youtube channel and enable the notifications so whenever we upload new content, you guys are notified. I'm George, and I'll see you guys next time.